You know, there's times during the spawn where a largemouth becomes very aggressive. In fact, at times he can leave himself open to over-harvest. Well, I can go on and on about that, but I'm gonna leave it up to my good buddy, Chris Lane, as he goes in depth. This is typical springtime on Lake Gunnersville. We have beautiful trees. They're just now changing. Beautiful azaleas that have been blossoming, dogwoods. And what's going on right now is the fish are coming in. They're getting ready to spawn. This is the time of year that the bass really push up into these pockets. And what we're doing is we're covering a lot of water, a lot of depths of water from, from real, real shallow all the way to four or five feet trying to catch the bigger pre-spawning bass. We're catching fish on the bed, we're catching fish off the bed, going up to spawn, coming off to spawn. There's just a lot of things going on right now. This time of year, Lake Gunnersville, big bass, fat bass, and just a lot of area to cover and a lot of area to fish. You know, one of the neat things about throwing a shallow water swim bait this time of year is you can throw it over scattered grass, scattered wood, um, on the edge of these mats, cattails, you know, all over the place. And right here, we have grass, you know, it's only about four foot deep right here. And you have grass that's probably about this far off the bottom. And one thing about it is that swim bait's just coming through there, you know, just slow rolling it down. You got sticks and a hard bottom. You know, one thing this time of year you want is make sure you have a hard bottom quite a few fish in here and they're just getting ready to set up, spawn, feed, just kind of enjoy their time up in the shallow waters before summer hits. There he is, little guy. Oh. Nice little bass right there. There you go. Fishing in this area right here, as you can tell, we've got a very slow retrieve. And the reason is, as I'm sitting here looking, it's about four foot deep, right off of some points that are coming out, some channel swings that come in, and there's some grass down there about a foot above the bottom. I wanna make sure that that fish sees that bait the entire time or keeps it right in his strike zone. If I'm up too high, the fish is gonna watch it go by at 62 degree water temp. But if I'm down right in front of him or right over that bed or right by that piece of grass and it gives that fish long enough to follow it, boom, he's gonna eat it. There's another one. Right there. I mean, this fish probably hit it two or three times. We're not even up to where we lost that big one earlier. This was just one that, you know, I think I had a bite or two coming around this point, And I mean, that time it got it. Look at how pretty these fish are, just a beauty. This time of year with the water being cooled down, you want that slow retrieve. So a 6-2, 6-4 gear ratio. You don't want a 7-1 right now. I think it's just a little bit too fast. And of course, a 7-3, 7-2, 7-6, something like that. Medium heavy titanium rod. Something you got a lot of power. Fast tip, but you want to be able to feel. And this is just a shallow water swim bait. That's a live motion one here, but uh, trocar, three aught weighted hook with a weighted swim bait in shallow water you'll be able to cover a lot more water and it's going to swim a lot better for you at a right speed that's a good one all right man what a beauty you can see how fat she is just full of row what a beautiful fish we'll let her go go let her do her thing make plenty more See ya, girl. Fishing this time of year, as you can see, the fish we're catching are fat. They're beautiful. They're up here, some are spawning, some are getting ready to spawn. They're full of eggs. This time of year is crucial. This is the reproduction time of all of the lakes, you know, around this country. You know, in a place like this, especially on Lake Gunnersville, it's such a great lake to fish. It's beautiful. It's a great place to come and catch a lot of fish, but there's so much pressure here on this lake right now. This is the time of year. Come catch fish, 
have a blast, but make sure we let them go so they can reproduce so that our kids and grandkids can continue to come back and catch plenty of big Lake Gunnersville bass. Hey, you know, one thing to always remember about keeping bass, there's nothing wrong with catching a few keepers for the dinner table, right? But when you really think about catching a bigger bass, like the Alpha Dogs, three pounds and up, well, those are the ones you definitely, well, you want to let those go. Number one, you want those genetics in your lake for years to come after the spawn. And number two, if you really sit and think about it, eating a big bass, well, they just don't taste that good. Shallow water swim baits, Lake Gunnersville, Alabama, during the spawn, check it out. As it warms up, as the, as the sun gets a little bit higher and as, you know, the fish I think are going to slowly push you up and become a little bit more aggressive, you know, we're going to kind of go with them and as you can see we got a lot of lily pads right here and when you get into heavy cover like that a lot of the times your opportunities of catching a really big bass are, are in these lily pads so I'm going to switch up, I'm going to change it up a little bit, same bait and everything but with line. In line I'm going to throw a braided line compared to the fluorocarbon that we've been throwing. The water's been real clear. It's a little bit dirtier in here, but for the most part, I'm gonna do it because the strength of the fish that are possibly in these lily pads, I'd rather them pull on braid than fluorocarbon when I'm in here. So we're gonna stretch up to a strand 50 pound braid and see what happens. One question that you know we get asked a lot is what, what type of knot do you tie with braid? Is it a cinch knot? Is it a palmar knot? Is it a double cinch knot? You know, I always use a double palmar knot. I'll run it through one time because this line is so silky or you know slick, what happens is if you only tie one or if you tie that cinch knot, one thing that'll happen is it slides through. So you run it through twice and then you pull it apart right there just like a normal palm or not run it through take your tag line and pull your tag line tight and voila fishing in this area where there's a lot of lily pads what you see is long casts that we're making and the reason we're making long casts is because it is pretty shallow in here water's fairly clear and we don't want to spook the fish so making that long cast with 50 pound braid the one thing that's so important with it is when you get that bite that line goes whether that fish goes left or right your line is around that lily pad and to get that hook set with no stretch in your line helps you catch more fish See, all through those lily pads. All right. Little adjustment. That fish hit it way back in those lily pads. Wow. Fluorocarbon, I think, or mono would have had me tied up, but look at that. Another Gunnersville beauty. You know, when you're fishing in these thick lily pads with this braided line, one thing with braid is it floats. Fluorocarbon sinks, so you can keep that real steady retrieve with fluorocarbon. But in these lily pads where we're at, you know, throwing this, this heavy braided line and making really long casts, it's pretty shallow in here, but you want to make sure that you go slow enough to where that tail's still kicking, but that bait is down in front of that fish. <sighs> and a quick release there she goes but throwing that you know as you could see coming out of that real green stuff right there I mean that fish hit me and was going straight that way so by the time I set the hook if I was throwing any other line than this strand braid I would have missed that fish obviously the hook still wasn't in her that good but you know bringing it through there getting the no stretch getting that hook set was able to get that fish to the boat here on lake gunnersville we've thrown the braid and we've thrown the fluorocarbon and it's really paid a big dividend on both sides in in the areas that we were fishing now as you get further south down into florida down into lily pads and cattails and that's all you have it's 
100% braided line the entire time for me. And then we move up to say Smith Lake up in Virginia or Smith Lake over here in Coleman, Alabama. The shallow water swim bait is still going to work and it's still going to catch just the same amount of fish, but you're going to be throwing more fluorocarbon than you are braid because you don't have near the vegetation. Here on Gunnersville, we got it all. So when you're sitting there and you're fishing and you look at the situation that you're in, you look at the cove that you're in, just think to yourself, what's gonna give you the best opportunity to get the fish in the boat? If you got a lot of vegetation, nasty, gnarly stuff, you're gonna wanna throw braided line. If you're up on these rock lakes that don't have a lot of grass, throw the fluorocarbon, have fun, catch a lot of fish. Look at that. Come here. Don't. Ah, ha ha! That's what I'm talking about right here. Beautiful, fat. Look, you can see how she's red on the tail like that. Just a beautiful Gunnersville bass right there. Let this one go and catch another one. So shallow water fishing in the spawn. One of the biggest things is to make sure that you have some shallow water swim baits. You wanna fish pretty slow. You know, we haven't been very aggressive today. The water temperature's around 62, 63 degrees. So the bite's a little slow, but they still bite. And you just wanna make sure that you keep that bait just above the grass or the shells or whatever it is you're fishing and just let that thing swim around and boom, they come up and get it. Whether they're coming up to bed or whether they're on a bed, this is a great way to catch a lot of fish.